Good morning. And do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Here's a, here's a very personal homemade tree of life that uh, I have projected some of my honored seniors in my life, <laughs> including my wife Constance there, who is actually six months older than I am, so believe it or not. I'll, uh, I'll explain this more in just a second. But uh, I thought I would share with you something that I prepared for uh, uh, a talk just uh, a few uh, few weeks ago. And uh, I'm not going to do the whole thing because there's a slideshow that goes with it and everything else. But I thought I'd... <clears throat> I would share uh, uh, my thoughts on uh, what I call senior moments, okay? And uh, uh, when you're my age, you start uh, having more friends uh, dead than <laughs> than alive, okay? So, so I, I, the older you get, the more you're surrounded by ghosts and. Uh, uh, those ghosts uh, <clears throat> take on a, uh, a more significant dimension in your uh, your spiritual DNA. Uh, some become more important, some uh, not so. But I, I thought I'd at least share this uh, with you this morning uh, because uh, not everyone uh, could attend the event, and uh, I'll just give you a little piece of the action here, okay? Uh, I'm 76 years old, and there's plenty I could say about the joys and the rewards and the heartaches and sorrows of suffering the slings and arrows of outrageous fortunes of seven decades that span two centuries, two millennia, in a new aeon. <laughs> That's plenty of eras, okay? The title of my talk is Senior Moments. I said, hell, my mother rode to work on a horse. Well, actually, she, <laughs> she didn't ride to work. She rode to school on a workhorse, okay? wasn't even a horse horse it was a it was named bill she, i remember her telling the story she was pitching hay to to bill the the workhorse that she rode to school on and she accidentally hit its nose with the pitchfork <laughs> and she says oh bill i'm sorry I don't know why she thought it was funny, but she thought it was funny that she was talking to a horse. Oh, how silly to talk to a horse. Okay. But I digress. She lived to be almost 93. Okay, so she'll, she's long dead, but uh, she'll always remain my senior until at least I'm 93. Okay. But my dear father died when I, uh, in 1972, when he was only 61 years old. And right now I'm already two years older than my older brother, Mark, who has passed away. It's weird to think about your father being a younger man, a much younger man, 13 years younger than I am right now because he holds such a significant senior position in, in my life. Well, anyway, so while we have plenty of opportunities to make light of the inevitable short-term memory loss type senior moments that come with aging, why don't we instead give some thought to another kind of senior? The spiritual elders, 
who have touched our lives and whose influence continues to be a guiding light, or at least a contributing factor in our uh, incarnational adventures. Most cultures and civilizations around the world have for thousands of years honored, revered, and respected the elders in the community. Here in the United States, we're not so subtle, I guess, or sensitive. In our busy lives, we're quick to put our elders out of our lives as soon as possible. Irritated by their old-fashioned views and fossilized opinions and their embarrassingly laughable inability to possibly understand life in our phone, iPhone complex modern world. We often wish they would just go away. But when they do finally leave us, they don't really go away, do they? Like it or not, like Noah's Arks, we preserve and carry their DNA across a space-time sea of blood. And not only the molecular level, in case of our biological parents, but in our soul's DNA. We are just as deeply influenced and mutated by the living DNA of our adopted spiritual seniors. So maybe we should be thinking about them a little bit, acknowledging and owning that inheritance. And maybe we should think about it while we still have time to tinker with the works. Time to amplify within ourselves the strong and healthy traits we've inherited from them. And time to mitigate the weak and damaged traits so that those who will adopt us as elders won't be inheriting our unwelcome baggage. It's a funny thing about elders. They're strange category of influencers. They don't have to be saints or heroes or mentors or life coaches or individuals we admire or look up to. They can be out and out phonies, con men, con women. In fact, sometimes our most influential elders have already passed along to us a whole smorgasbord of their genes simply by their villainous examples. Hell, I, I read recently that uh, roughly 0.5% of uh, the male population worldwide, re representing millions and millions of men, carry the genes of Genghis Khan. But let's get a little more up close and personal. Start thinking about the seniors in your genetic family tree. Who are they? What positive characteristics and attitudes of theirs are you amplifying? What flaws or shortcomings are you subconsciously emulating? Are you still trying to prove something <laughs> to any of them? My father, Clifford E. Duquette, that's how we always sign it. C.E. Duquette, he loved to sign it like that. Was obviously a very important senior in my life. He was handsome, hardworking, ambitious, ethical, disciplined, smart, very creative, innovative and inventive as Spock. Logical as Spock, too. But he was also vainly oversensitive overly prideful, moody, indecisive, and indolent at the worst possible times. He was quick-tempered. 
He was a secretive old Scorpio with many secrets to hide. Later we found out, years later I found out he was married twice before he married Mom. Several times Mom had to drag him by the ear out of a saloon and he chain smoked himself to death at 61. I'm not that handsome, and I'm a sensitive cancer and not a Scorpio, but I smoked and drank too much for years, and I check a lot of his other boxes as well. Our senior moments are happening 24-7, even while we sleep, especially while we sleep. The older I get, the more I try to pause and take stock of how I'm handling my virtues and vices of my menagerie of seniors in an attempt to fine tune my own inheritance. It's almost as if I sense my efforts are serving to fine tune, per perhaps on s some unexplainable quantum level, I'm fine tuning my seniors great work as well. Does that make any sense? Have you ever taken an inventory of the seniors hiding in your hereditary woodpile? I think the Beatles were actually trying to do something like that when they posted a collage of, quote, people we like. On the cover of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, the album cover. Not one of them did not have some kind of input in the spiritual genes of each of the Beatles. There's Aleister Crowley and Yogananda and Babaji and lots of people that on the surface might not have anything to do with some someone's spiritual inheritance. I mean, Marilyn Monroe and Johnny Weissmuller. <laughs> W.C. Fields, okay? But there they are. What might your album cover look like? Without having to give it much thought, here's a quick peek at mine. Oh, I've got hundreds of relatively modern cultural elders who I never met or knew personally that have gone into making the soup of my spiritual DNA. Alan Watts, Yogananda, William Walker Atkinson, Isadora Duncan, The Beatles, Orson Welles, Bob Dylan, Joan Baez, and, of course, Aleister Crowley. I can bet you could do the same. But our lives have also been blessed with a galaxy of senior stars. Of seniors we have known personally. Whose influence have tinkered directly with our DNA. And my list could be rather long. Just for starters, I've got Phyllis and Grady, Israel Regarde, Helen Parsons Smith. These three lions are icons of the modern Thelemic movement. Phyllis officiated my, at my Minervan initiation with Grady in 1975. And Phyllis, Grady, and Helen officiated at my first degree initiation. Phyllis would become my AA superior. All of them were magical role models. And all of them <laughs> were human. They each were awesomely inspiring in many respects. But like all of us, they had many and sometimes serious flaws and human shortcomings. As an example of ancestral seniors, they were just perfect. 
because their flaws and shortcomings were as instructive as their glories. There was Alan Miller, also known as Christopher S. Hyatt. Now there's a senior of mine who perfectly exemplifies the extremes of senior influences. A brilliant thinker, writer, and spiritual adventurer. He was also a publisher who taught me the disciplines of writing and gave me my career, or the start of my career, as an author. He was generous and at times very thoughtful and caring. But the flip side of his character, usually triggered by alcohol, could be dangerous to be around. He could bring out the worst in people around him as easily as he could draw out their genius. I use him as an extreme example of a love-hate dynamic that can exist between you and the seniors in your life. Kenneth Anger. I had the great privilege to officiate Kenneth Anger's OTO Man of Earth and Lovers Triad Degree Initiations in Hastings, England a number of years ago. He was several times a house guest of ours in Costa Mesa, and he treated our lodge members with a screening in our, in our temple living room area there. As he screened uh, with a projector and everything, uh, screening of Lucifer Rising that had just come out. He was a dear friend of our family. He was also, like many geniuses, a very intense and mercurial character and could be outrageously unpredictable in his behavior. But we love him and miss him and honor and try to emulate his mad creative angels. Robert Anton Wilson. Perhaps one of my favorite seniors who I knew personally. Quite frankly, I can't think of a downside to his influence upon all levels of my self-identity. I can say the same thing about my Golden Dawn senior, Israel Rigardi, and my witch senior, Margot Adler, and my Solomonic magic senior, Poke Runyon, and my tarot senior, Rachel Pollack. I wish I could gather them all together in one big photograph, like Sergeant Pepper cover. There would be Bill Heydrich, Jim Wasserman, Lola DeWolf, even Daniel Gunther and Jerry Cornelius and, and Marcella Moda and scores of others, living and dead, would be there peeking out at me from my senior woodpile. I even attempted to organize the ones I know or personally knew on a tree of life, and it didn't really work very well. But here's what I came up with, and that's what I showed you, <laughs> showed you at first there. So... I've got Timothy Leary there at the top at Kether. And then in the in the father position, the Magus father position is Grady McMurtry. Phyllis Seckler there in in Bina. And Robert Anton Wilson in Daoth. And then we got Christopher Hyatt there, Alan Miller in Hesed. Helen Parson Smith there in Gebura, Constance in my heart chakra there. Got Margot Adler down there in Netsock, Regarding in Hode, the great Pope Runyon in uh, Yesod, 
and Malkuth is open because it pretty much that's me. Anyway, that's I'm sharing my senior moment with you on this uh, on this Thursday morning, and uh, that's it. I hope to see you to, uh, tomorrow. Continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.